Yo, people, this is a quick little video to show you all how we scratch live input. Scratch live, live input. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Um, we are talking about how we can scratch live input. In this case, it's coming from the microphone, but I want you to bear in mind first that this is only one of like any number of sources, right? By live input, we mean what's coming through the DAW at this moment, which can be this microphone, it could be an instrument, it could also be something being generated by the DAW, right? So a beat. Maybe we, ha we have a beat and we have some vocals and we wanna scratch those vocals in real time. So we're playing through our set and there's a place where I wanna be able to scratch the vocals, we can do that, all right? I'm gonna show you all of that. We're gonna do it um, fairly quickly. Uh, and I gotta say, like, I'm not gonna give you a, a big demo here. What I would love to see is what some of you guys can do with this because I know there are much more talented people than me uh, out there uh, making all kinds of music. And I know there's some people that could do some amazing things with this plugin. So uh, let's get into it. Here's what we're going to do in this video. First, we're going to show you setup because it's a little, you know, it's not confusing, but it's a little challenging to set this thing up. You got to think about where everything's routing, right? Um, we're going to talk about how the plugin works and we're going to talk about how, uh, how to think about the, these features. Like how does this work in conjunction with the DAW? How does this work in real time? How do we think about the syncing uh, of the audio when we have this ability to just take the audio and take the audio and take it totally out of whack in which case look now what's going to happen take it totally out of whack in which case uh oh look now what's going to happen right so we got to talk about syncing so first some setup uh scratch track has four inputs y'all right why does it have four inputs because the first two are for time code Okay, so the primary use for this plugin is for people that want to scratch with records, right? Time-coded records, Serato, Tractor, all that stuff. Um, or for that matter, this kind of stuff, MIDI controllers. Um, but if it's with records, you got to get that time code into the plugin. So the first two channels are for that. That means that the live input comes in on channels three and four. Okay, that's a little challenging for some people because it's different in every DAW. How do we route? to channels three and four of a plugin, right? And is there a difference if it's a audio unit or a VST or a VST3? Sometimes there are, yeah. And from DAW to DAW, it's different. Um, a lot of DAWs call it, call it sidechain. Um, the sidechain inputs in, in Logic, for example, are three and four. Um, in Ableton, that's the one we're gonna be demoing in right now. In Ableton, there's a drop down for it, right? So here is, let's do this, take this one to master. Here's a beat, right, in Ableton. All well and good. We're gonna route that. Instead of going to master, I'm gonna route that to uh, track three, which over here has a scratch track on it. And I'm gonna route it to live in, right, using this drop down. When you do that, uh, it will start to show up here. Now I've also got this routing, so we see both of them. Uh, at the moment you see my voice, but now if I hit the beat, There it is, right? Uh, we also have a, a level indicator here so that you can see what's coming in for live in so that you know once you've got it hooked up right, you should be able to see it right there. You should also, as soon as you turn on live in, you'll see it up here, okay? So once you've got it routed, uh, this is now on the turntable. It's the same turntable as, as the tracks, right? So we have some tracks uh, as well internal to the plugin. So you can load up samples, drop those samples, and scratch them, right? <clears throat> um, okay, that's all, that's all pretty good. That's all pretty powerful. Let's think now about how this works when we get a little out of whack. What do we think about scratching? Uh, what do we think about syncing? What do we think about um, crossfade, right? So right now, you can hear my voice because I'm recording what's coming through the microphone, but it's not actually going through scratch tracks. So you would... You see it up there, but you're not gonna hear it because this is off, right? We have a crossfader. So we gotta think about this now as this audio, this live input is being laid onto a turntable and it's typical turntable setup. You got two turntables uh, and one, you can hear the beat, but if you crossfader is off, you don't hear the beat. Second, if, it, uh, if you move that turntable, it's gonna run the same. So crossfader is off, you don't hear the beat. Whoop. Whoop. Automatically resank, resank, resynced. What happened there? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. There's a lock here. If I tell it to lock the syncing, 
It magically knows that I'm scratching. When I stop, it jumps, jumps right, right back up. up. It's, it's going to jump, jump on beat one, I believe. Next, Next time it sees beat one, one come around, it's, it's going to jump right back, back to uh, live, right back to the most current thing playing. This is so that if you're playing, like I said, you're sitting there with your DJ set, you're playing through a big Ableton set, and part of it's routing to scratch track, and you're scratching all that stuff. When you let go, you wait a second, and it, as long as that lock is enabled, it'll be right back to whatever Ableton's playing. You'll hear streaming right through the plugin. Okay, so this should allow you to like scratch, do all your crazy stuff, and then pretty quickly get back to out of the woods, right? Additionally, you've got this sync button, so we can turn it off if we wanna control, control when we sync. Whenever, Whenever we, we hit the, the sync, sync button, button it's, look at that, it does it while I'm... Woo! I can just keep syncing it to the front. I now should turn that friction up too. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think you get the idea. Um, point being, uh, that sync button, which is also MIDI mappable, by the way, MIDI map that, you hit a button and boom, you're right back to, this, to the, uh, the front, to the like live, right? Which is what you need. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. I mean, we've done a lot to make it a pretty simple setup. So I think you all find this, uh, I hope everybody finds this very useful. Like I said, this was just going to be a quick video, show off the fact that it's working. Um, I would love to see what some other people can do. I need demos of this. I need people that can like really make some music and show off scratching in a DAW environment because that's what we do here. Uh, yeah, that's it. Have a good one.